your phone suddenly vibrates. A text alert. Nothing too surprising about that, but you don't recognize the number. You open the message, and there's no text, just a picture. A strange figure dressed all in black, with a face that looks like the skull of a dog. Who sent this, you think to yourself? Is this a prank? You try to put it out of your mind and go about your day. The next day, there's another message from the same number. You open this one to find the same dog skull-faced creature staring back at you. But this time, you recognize the background. Is that your house he's standing in front of? Now you're getting a little freaked out. Someone is trying to mess with you, you're sure of it. But what can you do? Another couple days pass, and you get another message. You don't need to look to know it's that same number again. You've been getting plenty of these over the last few days. You're really scared now, and you run out of the house to your car. You've got to get out of here. You drive, and while stopped at a light, you decide to finally check this latest message and see what it is. It's the creature again, but this time, it's a picture of him sitting in the back seat of your car. You put your phone down and slowly turn your head. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob, and this is SCP-1471, also known as Mallow version 1.0.0. SCP-1471 is a very interesting anomaly that's not really a creature or a monster or even an object. It's a mobile app. It's 9.8 megabytes in size and is freely available in online application stores where it's listed under the name Mallow version 1.0.0. There's no developer listed on any of the stores, and it seems as though the app is somehow able to bypass the normal application approval process and appear directly on the stores for wide distribution. Once SCP-1471 is downloaded and installed on a device, there are no icons, shortcuts, or widgets like you'd expect when installing software. It also does not appear on program managers, and once installed, it seems there's no way to remove it. Within three to six hours of installing the app, the individual whose device it is will begin receiving mysterious picture messages. All of these images will have one thing in common. Somewhere in the foreground or background is a large humanoid figure with a canine-like skull for a head and long black hair. This creature has been designated SCP-1471-A. Sometime during the first 24 hours following the installation of SCP-1471, the individual's device will start to receive slightly different images from before. These images still always contain instances of 1471-A, but now the locations will be recognizable to the individual. These pictures will be of places that the individual regularly frequents like their local grocery store, their school, or their work. These sorts of images will continue to be received until 48 hours since the initial installation has passed. At that point, the device will start to receive images of places that the individual recently visited, like an image of the restaurant where they picked up their lunch an hour ago. Just as before, all of these images have SCP-1471-A somewhere in them, as if it's been following them and wants them to know it. After 72 hours, things get even stranger. Now the pictures received by the individual will be of them in real time. They might receive a picture of themselves sitting on the couch, taking in that exact moment, except SCP-1471-A is standing right behind them. But when they look, there's nothing there. It's as if someone is photoshopping in this bizarre canid creature, but doing so impossibly fast. Finally, after over 90 hours have passed since the app was installed, the weirdness reaches its peak. The individual no longer receives photo messages, but instead will start to catch glimpses of SCP-1471-A in real life, either in their peripheral vision, in reflective surfaces, or in both. At this point, the individual afflicted will continue having visualizations of SCP-1471-A in the real world a result that so far has been irreversible. Individuals who have reached this extreme stage of exposure have reported that the entity appears to be trying to visually communicate with them, but none of them have been able to understand or comprehend whatever message it's trying to relay. 
Such was the case with a subject named William. William had first been exposed to SCP-1471 at 15 years old when his sister, Sarah, showed him an app she had downloaded earlier in the day. The app's description states that you will never have to settle for awkward feelings of being alone ever again. That Mallow is an exciting and interactive experience that will keep you engaged and intrigued, and that after just a few hours of Mallow, you will soon forget all about those painful emotions of disappointment. Neither William nor his sister knew how the app worked, but they assumed it was tracking them using some kind of GPS, and soon, William was receiving images from SCP-1471. The first one he received was of his school's courtyard, with SCP-1471-A, barely noticeable, sitting on a bench. He had black, matted fur, knife-like claws, a set of blank, pure white eyes, and a face that looked like the skull of a beast with a large, wolfish grin. William was immediately frightened by this, but Sarah insisted it was cute and funny. William wasn't so sure. The pictures continued over the following days, with SCP-1471-A appearing at his school, at his bus stop, on his street, nearly everywhere he went. And then, the pictures started appearing as if they had just been taken the moment they were received. William and Sarah were both being sent the same type of nightmare-inducing images, and they tried to delete the app from their phone to stop them, but they couldn't find where the application was stored. Then, things got even worse. The creature started appearing to William and Sarah in the real world. William, as it turns out, was the lucky one, as SCP-1471-A primarily appeared to him in reflective surfaces like mirrors, which he could cover with a curtain when he didn't want to see the strange dog skull face with its toothy grin staring back at him. Sarah was less fortunate. She saw the creature everywhere she looked, it always appearing just outside of her periphery, catching glimpses out of the corner of her eye, or feeling it looming over her and watching her as she slept. William has been able to cope with the appearances of 1471A, even regarding it as a somewhat comforting presence at times. Sarah, sadly, was driven mad by the never-ending visions of the creature. Currently, the only known treatment to reverse the effects of SCP-1471 and the appearances of 1471A is to eliminate the individual's exposure to the images before 90 hours have passed after installing the app. Once those 90 hours have elapsed, though, it is too late, and SCP-1471-A becomes a permanent presence in the individual's life. Thankfully, 1471-A has thus far remained non-hostile and has not been shown to pose a threat to those afflicted by it, at least not a physical threat. All mobile devices that are found to have Mallow version 1.0.0 installed on them are to be confiscated and analyzed for any potential information as to who might have created the application, as well as leads for other devices that may have been infected. Following this investigation, the device's batteries are to be removed and the device placed in Storage Unit 91 at Research Site 45. Additionally, all online application stores for mobile devices are to be monitored to prevent unsuspecting users from inadvertently downloading the anomalous software. Any individuals who are suspected of having downloaded SCP-1471 will have their device targeted by a self-uploading malware that can disable it until it's able to be seized by Foundation agents. Due to the unpredictable nature of the anomaly and the potential sentience of the software itself, SCP-1471 has been classified as Euclid by the SCP Foundation and research into ways to hopefully one day contain the anomalous software is ongoing.